Hold up. Wait a minute. Y'all thought I was finished? <laughs> oh, no, 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 my friend. We are back with Portiverse Lore Ramblings. New title. Oh, yeah. Episode 6 is finally here. So without further ado, let's get into it. Number 1. D261 was built in 1960 and mostly ran around the London Middle Region throughout his working life. Though he would occasionally pop up in the Northwestern Region on Sodor from time to time. Much to the Northwestern Engine's disdain. In 1983, he was withdrawn from service and was due to be scrapped. The crew of D261, however, saw to prevent that, and he really contacted the NWR for a potential purchase deal. The deal worked, and Northwestern Railway purchased D261 for British Railways. And D261, named Ringner now, was clearly shipped over to Sodor, where it was repainted out of British Railways blue into Northwestern green. And Ringner is currently one of the Northwestern's freight engines as of 2023. Number 2. Sam was built in 1938 as an experimental prototype 4664 Express freight engine for the Big City Railroad, and it broke a few records as the largest steam locomotive to ever work on the Big City Railroad, and Sam was painted into an all-new teal livery that became the railroad's express freight livery. Sam was one of the last steam locomotives to be in service on the railroad and was withdrawn in 1969. After this, Sam floated around a handful of owners over the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, until so being placed in storage in around 2004 following expiration of his boiler ticket. In 2010, Sam was shockingly purchased by the Big City Railroad, who bought him back and restored him by 2014 for Red Source, similar to what Union Pacific's Big Boy does nowadays. And Sam still hauls his Red Source on a regular to his very day. Number 3 MSR number 3 and 4 never received name changes, and their names were always Falcon and Peter Sam, respectively. I just found the whole day at the even name change randomly, just kind of weird and how they went along with it willingly. A little bit strange, you know? So it made a little change, so yeah. Moving on. Number four. The Northwestern Railroad was pretty crazy for bacon engines in the 1930s and built a handful of experimental engines for this, but mostly just couldn't keep up with the sheer incline of Gordon's Hill. But in 1936, an 010 tank engine emerged from the works. It was actually a successful engine. Northwestern Railway number 69 Antares became the official banker for Gordon's Hill and was stationed at Wellsworth. And he will be joined by Bell in the 1960s and they will both be seen wearing the Northwestern Railway's banking indigo livery as they call it by the late 60s. And Antares is still the banker for Gordon's Hill in present day. And yes, like many, many, many other characters in this portaverse, I plan on making a model of this guy. So look out for that in the distant future. Number 5. So you might recall me saying that certain characters live on a part of Sodor, but that I'll get into in a later video. Well, I'll just say it now. Characters like Stanley, Connor Kalen, and Neil, among others, live on the Olfsted Castle Railway. And this also includes NW1 number 27 as well. And this railway will be getting its own video in the near future, so I'll be very brief on the history in this video. It was originally a site for a World's Fair that was in 1966, I'll skin to another video as well. But the land was bought up by Sir Robert Norby II in the early 70s and turned into a Preservation Railway and Medieval Museum by 1974. That's all I'm going to reveal for now on this railway, but so you can look out in your future, the UCR is definitely not done for. Look out for that in the future. Number 6. The locomotives of the Farquhar Core Company are Mavis, 16, and a Wheatley Y10 class named Gale. Gail's model is, if you see on my Twitter, is what I'm working on, is currently in the works, so we'll talk about her a little bit more when she's ready. As for 16, he would arrive in late 1968 as a part of the NWRBR split deal. Well, you can also got Count Thumper technically as an FQC engine, rolling stock vehicle thing. So yeah, it's kind of a whole Farquhar core thing, it's pretty cool. Number 7. When Duck was sent off to Wellsworth in 1957, he briefly became a banking engine for Gordon's Hill as Antares was undergoing an overhaul. A 7F was originally brought on for this, but more power was needed, and to further improve his track day of effort, Duck's sandboxes were extended to go above his running board to hold more sand. And Duck will retain these mods after the whole Crosby Barbershop crash in 1957, and he still wears these new sandboxes in present day. Thank you all very much for watching this episode of the Portiverse Law Ramblings. And don't worry, Northwestern Predecessors Episode 2 is in the works and should be ready soon. But I do have one more video coming out right after this, and then Northwestern Predecessors returns. So don't worry, I definitely didn't forget about it. So yeah.
Thank you all very much for watching this episode, and I'll see you all in the next one. The Super Bowl! Yeah!